In this demo, I'm going to cover building a fault tolerant file share with DFS. What this means is that when one file server becomes unavailable, users are still able to access file resources on their network. So let's take a look at fault tolerant DFS and then we'll jump into our demo. So implementing DFS namespace and replication helps us provide a highly available file structure. In our example here, we have two servers, DFS1 and DFS2. We've installed DFS namespace and DFS replication on both of these. So we've also gone in and we've created a namespace called contoso.com slash DFS. So then what we've also done is we've gone in here and we've set up DFS replication so that files are available on both servers. This is a great way to have redundancy of your file shares. So when one client goes to a server for a file, what happens is that DFS determines which folder share and which server it goes to. So then when one of those servers goes down, the next request goes through DFS and gets routed to an available server. From the client end, there's no difference. You don't have to have a new UNC path to get to your resources. So this is pretty neat stuff. So it provides you that file tolerance so that when you do lose these servers, that you're able to get to your resources. So let's jump into our demo. So in our demo, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process of creating this fault tolerance use, using DFS. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a couple local folders and then share those out so that they're available as network shares. Then we'll bring those into then what we're going to do is we're going to configure DFS replication between those two folders on the various servers. And then we'll create the namespace that includes those target folders. I'm also going to show you another way of creating a fault tolerant DFS namespace for those cases when you don't actually have the shared folders created. So the method we see here, this is great when we have existing data and we want to bring those into DFS. So if you're starting from scratch, we'll show you a method for those. So let's jump into our demo. So first we're going to take a look at setting up a fault tolerant DFS folder file share when we already have existing folders created on our system. So as you can see here, I've got a fonts folder underneath this DFS demo folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this one out. We're going to share it with, we're just going to put the everyone group in there. We're going to give them read write. So they're able to work with that. And then I'm going to go over to my other server as well. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to share this out put everyone in there, read write. So there we go. So now we have those two shares available for us to use. So then I'm going to go back to my primary DFS server. We'll go into the DFS management console. So at this time, what I'm going to do is first thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a namespace. We'll create our new namespace, put in SY, SYD dash DC, name of the namespace, and this one we're going to call it DFS. Going to click next, and that'll create our namespace. So it creates the namespace on that single server. So if we go to namespace tab, we see it, it has that server. So I want to add in the other server, the Melbourne server. So we'll add in the DCMB. OK. So now this will be in that namespace. So the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on. I'm going to create a replication group because this is what they have you do in the lab. And it's, it's a good process to run through. So creating a replication group, what this allows us to do is basically take 
two file folders and replicate the content between those. And that's a multi-purpose replication group. So in this one we're going to call this fonts and then I'm going to add in the servers that I want to take part in this. SYD-DC and then we're going to add in the Melbourne server as well. So all of the servers that you want taking part in the replication you want to add at this point. It's going to do a full mesh replication since we only have two, which is perfectly fine. It's going to continuously replicate and use the full bandwidth during the, the process. So we'll go with that as well. We'll click Next. Then it'll choose the primary server. So I'm going to choose the Sydney server since this already has some existing data. So it'll start the sync from here as the primary data source and then uh, they'll continue syncing back and forth as changes are put into the folders. Click Next. At this point, I need to put in the local path to where um, my data is located. So I'm going to browse out here. We're going to DFS Demo. Click Fonts. And then we'll take the default name of Fonts here. We'll click OK. And then We'll go to the next screen and notice it brings up my secondary member, but it doesn't have a local path. So at this point, I need to go out and specify that local path that it's using. So DFS demo. Then I could click browse and I could go out here and choose that fonts directory. So that'll replicate those between each other. So we we'll click Next. So now we have our replication group set up with our two members and we're replicating between both of those as we can see there, continuous and the paths so both are using the same path. So that'll create. So we have success. Then it gives us a replication delay warning basically saying that because D DFS utilizes Active Directory Domain Services replication there will be latency until all of the target servers determine that, okay, now they're part of a replication group and they know who they need to replicate with. So this can take anywhere from five to 15 minutes to uh, take place in your environment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to speed this process along. So I've got a PowerShell window and I'm using this command dfsr diag slash ad. And what this'll do is it'll force each of these systems to pull Active Directory. And what that does sometimes is that will kick along the process for getting these servers to know that they, they need to check in. So we'll go ahead and pull AD. Access denied. Operation failed. Oh, that's because I'm running the window not as administrator. So we'll go in and run this as administrator DFSR diag poll AD operation succeeded. So that should help push things along. So if we want to verify that things are are working for us we can go out to our namespace put in DFS And notice we don't have anything into DFS. The reason for that is that we haven't added any targets, folder targets. So let's go in and actually add some folder targets. So we're going to call these fonts and then we add in both shared directories from each server. So I'm going to put an SYDC, browse, and it'll show me all of the directories that I can use on that server. So we'll choose the fonts directory or the font share that we had set up previously and then we're going to do the same thing on our Melbourne server. So if you know the path you could put that in. Again I'm going to browse so that I see the location that I have. Got our fonts directory there. Click OK. Click OK. Now it'll ask us if we want to replicate between these two. And since 
we already set up the replication group, we don't need to do this. So we're going to click no here. So what should happen is that now we've got that fonts directory and if we go in here, we see we've got fonts available for us to use. And when we're going to this path, DFS is choosing which server uh, to put us into. So if one of these servers goes down, it's going to simply send us to one that's available within the namespace. And that's setting up a fault tolerant namespace when uh, stuff exists. So let's take a look at actually doing it if we don't have an existing uh, file and share structure. So I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to create a brand new namespace and we'll put it on the same server. SYDC. I'm going to call it DFS2. We'll take the default of the domain uh, based namespace. Click create. So instead of going down and going in and creating my folders, sharing them out, going down to the replication group, creating a replication group, and then adding the targets, I'm going to do basically everything as one big step. So first thing we always need to do is make sure that we have our namespace servers added in. So I'm going to add in, again, that Melbourne server so that we can utilize that as part of our namespace. So there we go. So now we're going to go into the click new folder and we're going to add in a fonts namespace under DFS2. We can do that because they're two different paths. So from here I need to add in the target. So I'm going to browse to a location here and notice I can click on new shared folder I'm going to call this DFS fonts because I've already used fonts. And then I'm going to have this go into C DFS demo slash DFS fonts. And then I want the administrator and other users to have read write. Click OK. Notice it gives me a warning that DFS fonts doesn't exist. Do I want to create it? Click yes. So that actually creates the folder the underlying folder and then also shares it out all in a couple of steps. So I click OK. OK again. Now I've added that in. So we do the exact same process on the Melbourne server. We're going to browse, click Add, DFS fonts, put in the again the same local path creates that. OK. OK. Now it's added both of those in. I click OK. Notice now it asks me, do I want to create that replication group? In this case, I'm going to choose yes, because this will then walk me through that same wizard, but pre-propagating information based on the fact that I just created this group. So gives us our group name, the full replicated folder name, We see we've got both of our servers. Choose the primary server. Full mesh. I'm going to change, change, take the same options. So there we go. Again, we're going to get the replication delay warning. And that's it. So that sets that up for us. So let's verify that we can actually get to. DFS2. So there we go. It takes us to a font directory. And that one's empty because I never copied any fonts over. So I'd add content into here and then I would copy the data back and forth. So there we go. So that is set a couple of different ways of setting up fault tolerant file shares with DFS.